EPC. Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandran. Today we are going to discuss about one of the highly demanded job criteria for piping design engineers which is EPC experience. It's important to understand what is EPC experience is all about. So without wasting your time, let's begin. EPC, Engineering, Procurement, Construction. It is a type of contract awarded to a particular contractor where the contractor agrees to execute all three phases of the project which is including engineering, procurement and construction. Why EPC experiences are highly demanded in most piping design engineering jobs? When you apply for a certain job, you must have seen that the companies are requesting a candidate to have an EPC experiences. This particular job criteria has been intentionally requested in order to achieve certain milestones in the project. Basically, the companies are expecting the candidates to have three important qualities. The first and the foremost quality is, candidates should have a strong understanding about the impact of interconnected activities and its importance. Why is it so important? Because only then you will be able to understand what activity is related to what other activities. Only then you will be able to deliver. If you don't understand what to start first and what to start later, then you will actually delay the project. This is very important for any EPC projects. Number two is, you must be able to deliver with assumptions. You cannot expect 100% input in all stages of the project. You still have to deliver. For that, you need to consider certain assumptions and deliver the document. So you should have the ability to deliver the document with assumptions. Number three is, you must be able to manage the time. You will have to do a lot of coordinations in EPC projects. So you should know the value of time and how to deliver, how to manage your time and resources. That's very important. So that is one of the reasons why the EPC experience are demanded. So it's really important to understand what is EPC experience is all about. Let's get into the video. Sorry to interrupt you. Let's take few seconds to understand the importance of PEMI Dakar design courses. I will not say that PEMI Dakar courses are the best in the world, but I can strongly say that PEMI Dakar courses will help you to learn piping design skills. Unlike other courses where theories are predominantly focused, PEMI Dakar focuses on the job related knowledge. The result is you'll be able to perform exceptionally well in all piping design interviews and also in your job. There are three courses available in PEMI Dakar, primarily focusing on three primary piping design skills. One is PNID, other one is pipe supports and the third is pipe routing. These three skills are considered to be one of the primary piping design skills for any piping design engineering profession. You'll be able to find my contacts in the details of the course. You can contact me for any clarification regarding the courses. Currently, there is a 30% offer is available. So you can avail this offer in order to learn piping design. Now let's go back to our topic. To understand the severity of EPC requirements, we must understand the hurdles of EPC projects. We should understand that it's not at all easy to execute any EPC projects because here the contractor has to manage thousands of activities and he has to do extensive planning in order to control all the activities. He has to manage the resources, he has to manage the time and manage the cost. So it's not at all an easy activity to execute the EPC projects. Generally, no clients will compromise on three important things. One is quality, time and cost. Therefore, it's necessary for any EPC contractor to squeeze all the activities within a given timeline because the end date of the project has already been fixed by the client while awarding the contract. What is the timeline of EPC projects? EPC project timeline is also known as life cycle of the projects which has three main stages engineering, procurement and construction. It also includes one more stage which is known as the commissioning support which is generally added in all the projects in order to support the clients. These stages are not executed one after other. This is what you have to understand. It is not like completing in engineering you will move to the procurement or in completing the procurement you will move to the construction. It is not like that. There are certain activities you will start parallelly and there are certain activities you will start parallelly but with certain lags and there are activities you will start in series. So it's really important to understand what are the activities to be started parallelly and to be started in series. What we do in engineering stage? Generally engineering stage either starts with the feed or detail engineering based on the type of contract which is being awarded. There are contracts awarded from feed there are contracts which are awarded from detail engineering. It is purely the interest of the client. However, the intention of the client is that 
EPC contractor has to finalize two important things. One is finalize the design and start producing the drawings and documents which is necessary for the construction to start their activity. This is primarily the focus of the engineering. However, completion of engineering, it's not about completing one particular activity. It is executed in stage wise. First, you will be completing the process engineering. Once you finalize the process engineering, there will be something known as a design review where they will review the process engineering documents and uh, drawings and based on which they will give you some comments. Once those comments are incorporated in process engineering, mechanical activity starts. Mechanical design also has been reviewed in three stages. One is 30%, 60% and 90%. When the reviews are 90% done, which means your design is 100% done, you can start producing the AFC drawings. However, during the 30, 60 and 90, there is one more review also to be done, which is known as Hazard Review. Hazard Review, the full form of Hazard Review is Hazard and Operability Study. Based on this review, there are some comments you will receive that also you have to incorporate. Once you incorporate these comments and completion of the 90% review comments, you can start producing the AFC drawings for the issue ones of construction. What is procurement? Procurement is nothing but procuring the materials to be used for construction. But generally, procurement activities does not start after engineering completion. It has to start parallelly with the engineering or it has to start with certain lags. Why is it so? Because of long lead items. What are long lead items? Long lead items are items that needs a delivery a minimum of six months time. It could be six months or 10 months or 12 months or 36 months. There are equipments that needs a delivery of 36 months. So if you start only after engineering completion, you will have to wait for 36 months to start the construction activity. That's one of the reasons why generally procurement activities are started along with engineering at the initial stage itself in order to save the time and expedite the work. This includes preparation of material requisition for equipments, material requisition for piping specialty items, listing out the long lead items and preparation of the bulk MTOs. This will help the procurement in order to procure the component as soon as possible to start the construction. Therefore, piping design engineers has to understand this importance and start preparing at the very initial stage of the project itself. That's why these kind of experience are really vital for any EPC projects. Like procurement, construction also can't wait for the completion of full procurement activities to start. They have to start some activity at some point of time to expedite the work or to complete the project within a given deadline. So the first and foremost activity that construction wants to do is the civil activities like site preparation, grade preparations, or if they can place some foundation, some structural work. Like if you finalize the plot plan, they can start planning the roads. If you finalize the pipe rack, they can start planning the foundations of the pipeline and the structural work. Likewise, if you identify certain things that can be executed at the very initial stage of the construction and can be parallelly done during the engineering or the procurement, that will save a lot of time for the project. That is the main intention of this experience. So when you have an EPC experience, it is understood that you will be able to support for all these activities to expedite the job to complete the project within a given deadline. This is the primary intention for expecting an EPC experience for piping design engineering jobs. I hope that this video has helped you to understand what is EPC and how this experience is important for piping design engineering roles. I will meet you with another fantastic video. Until then, bye from Subhash Chandra.